Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about the different components of a fire alarm system. This is not designed to be a deep analysis of everything there is to know about fire alarm systems. This is more intended as an educational and brief summary of all the components of a fire alarm system. Of course there are many nuances and details and things like that about fire alarms, but this is going to be a very brief summary of each device. Let's go ahead and get started. Starting with some things that are more obvious, notification appliances are fire alarm signals that are mounted throughout buildings to alert occupants to the presence of an emergency. These devices are used for communication and they're designed to incite a response from people. These could be horns, strobes, horn strobes, speakers, bells, anything like that that's designed to incite a response from occupants. Manual pulse stations are very common initiating devices that are installed throughout buildings. They provide a way for occupants of a building to manually activate the fire alarm system in an emergency. They're usually installed near exits, so that way occupants can pull the alarm while leaving the building. By the way, initiating devices are any fire alarm device that's designed to respond to a stimulus and to activate the fire alarm system. That stimulus could be smoke, heat, water flow a person pulling an alarm, anything like that. Also, initiating devices can be categorized as either conventional or addressable. In general, conventional devices are more simple. They're basically just a set of contacts, and when the panel is shorted, the particular zone that the device is on is activated. There could be many devices on a zone, so the location is not exactly pinpointed, whereas with an addressable system, each device has its own address, so they're all on the same loop, but each device has its own ID, so when the alarm is activated, an exact location is given. Traditional smoke detectors are the primary form of fire protection in most buildings. These detectors quickly pick up smoke and trigger the fire alarm system. They can be addressable or conventional. Also, there's two detection technologies, ionization and photoelectric. Most commercial smoke detectors are now photoelectric. Ionization detectors are mostly phased out, but there are two technologies. Heat detectors do exactly what they sound like. They detect heat from a fire. Heat detectors are not considered life safety devices though because they can't detect a fire quickly in its incipient stages. They have several technologies like for example, mechanical, rate of rise, line type. They're usually used in areas where smoke detectors can't be used like for example, a bathroom with a shower in it. If you were to put a smoke detector there, then there would probably be a lot of false alarms. So they would put a heat detector there. The fire alarm control panel is probably the most important part of any fire alarm system because it controls pretty much all of the devices on the system. All smoke detectors, pole stations, horn strobes, notification appliances, initiating devices are going to be wired back to the fire alarm panel. So without it, the system wouldn't work very well. The fire alarm panel is, again, the brains for the entire system. Although in some cases for larger buildings like maybe an airport or other huge high-rise buildings, there might be more than one fire alarm panel. These are considered different nodes of a main fire alarm system, but they're all networked back to one main fire alarm panel. Fire alarm panels range in size from tiny little conventional panels to huge networkable addressable systems, but in general, each fire alarm panel is going to have some basic functions at the panel. You can view what's going on in the system, you can silence an alarm, reset the system, acknowledge a condition, or do a fire drill. Um, the fire department can use the fire alarm panel to assess a situation when they arrive on scene. Also, fire alarm panels, as I briefly mentioned earlier, can be addressable or conventional. That means that some fire alarm panels are conventional where they just have some zones and there could be several devices on that zone. Those systems are usually older or in a lot of cases very simple. Um, they're not proprietary whereas an addressable system is proprietary and needs its own brand of devices to operate. Now, in many cases, the fire alarm panel is going to be mounted in some back electrical room or a closet or something like that. And that's a problem for the fire department because when they get on scene, they want to check the fire alarm panel quickly to see where the issue is. Now, that's where the fire alarm enunciators come in. Fire alarm enunciators are extensions of the fire alarm panel that basically mirror whatever the fire alarm panel is saying. So these things have all the basic functions of a fire alarm panel. You can control the fire alarm system from these enunciators. You can't do any programming. Um, things aren't wired to the enunciator, but the enunciator will basically display exactly what the fire alarm panel is displaying and you'll usually see these mounted at the building entrance sometimes they're outside but they're always mounted in a way that's conspicuous and visible to the fire department I think those were the more obvious components of a fire alarm system, you know, the things that you'd see walking around on a daily basis. Now we're going to move on to some things that people might not see as often. Duct detectors or duct smoke detectors are smoke detectors that mount on the outside of air ducts. Usually they're on the supply side, but their function is to shut down the HVAC system in the event that smoke is detected in the air duct. Of course, in a lot of cases, buildings have HVAC systems that circulate air throughout a building, but in the event there was a fire, the smoke would be picked up by the HVAC system and spread throughout the entire building. And that's not good. So in the event that smoke is detected in the air duct, there are sampling tubes behind the uh, smoke detector that go inside and the smoke detector 
will go off and then automatically shut down the system. In some cases, duct detectors are required to set off the fire alarm system. In a lot of cases, they are just programmed to cause a supervisory, but that does depend on the jurisdiction. In most cases, duct detectors are located in very inconvenient spots, either very high up on a ceiling, behind the ceiling, or even on the roof. So in a lot of cases, underneath a duct detector, you'll see a key switch that corresponds with that duct detector, and that allows an inspector to test the circuit that that duct detector is on by turning a key. And of course, there's also an indicator light that indicates whether that duct detector is in alarm or not. Sometimes you might see these remote LED stations outside of rooms. Usually these are outside of locked rooms and they indicate that a detector inside of that room has activated. Flow switches are important initiating devices that interface the fire sprinkler system with the fire alarm system. As the name suggests, they activate when there's water flow and they're designed to detect if a fire sprinkler has activated. They're usually mounted at the fire sprinkler riser, so they're positioned in a way that if a fire sprinkler were to activate on that branch, then the flow switch would activate and trip the fire alarm system. Tamper switches look very similar to flow switches. They're also usually mounted near fire sprinkler risers, but in a lot of cases, right, a fire sprinkler system has many different valves that need to be open, otherwise the system would not operate properly. Tamper switches detect if a valve is closed or something has been tampered with, and they send a supervisory signal to the fire alarm panel. Now, there's many devices in a building that are not proprietary, such as a flow switch or a tamper switch, which is basically just a set of contacts. So how do you use one of these devices on an addressable proprietary fire alarm system? The answer is a monitor module. A monitor module is a device that wires into an addressable fire alarm panel's loop and monitors a set of contacts. In fact, an addressable pole station is literally just a conventional pole station with a monitor module attached to it. These can be used in retrofit applications, because let's suppose you have a building where there's tons of conventional pole stations in it, and you don't want to replace the entire system, so you can just use monitor modules at each pole station to convert those devices to addressable. In many cases, you'll see these monitor modules monitoring things like water flow or duct detectors. Sync modules are designed to keep notification appliances in sync. Strobe lights especially out of sync can cause seizures in people with epilepsy, so ADA requirements require all strobe lights to be synced in a field of view. A beam detector is a special type of smoke detector that's designed to cover large spaces. They usually look like this, and as the name suggests, they involve a light beam. Specifically, one side shoots out a beam of infrared light, and there's a reflector on the other end, and the device measures how much light comes back to it. When a fire occurs, the smoke rises, which disrupts the beam and then triggers the alarm. Beam detectors are usually used in very large open areas, like for example a huge atrium, because if you wanted to protect that area with smoke detectors, you'd need many, many smoke detectors, whereas you could just use one beam detector and shoot a beam of light across that area to protect it. Carbon monoxide detectors do exactly what they sound like. They detect carbon monoxide. These are not too common on commercial fire alarm systems, but they are prevalent in some applications, like for example, apartment complexes, hotels, college dorms, things like that. It's very common to find smoke slash CO combos, but in general, these things can be found on commercial systems. Fire alarm power supplies go by many different names. Some call them power supplies, others call them knack extenders, and others call them booster panels. They all pretty much do the same thing though. They supply power that the fire alarm panel can't provide. In many cases, all notification appliances are just wired straight to the fire alarm panel. In smaller buildings, this works perfectly fine because the panel has some built-in circuits that can accommodate some notification appliances. But when you get to larger buildings like a huge shopping mall, maybe a high-rise building, the panel just can't handle that many strobes and horns. These power supplies pretty much just supply additional power to notification appliances in the building. You may see many of these power supplies used, with some buildings having tons and tons of power supplies, depending on size. Door holders are something that seem completely irrelevant to fire safety, but if you actually analyze what they do, they are most certainly crucial fire safety devices. Door holders are usually electromagnets that hold fire doors open, although sometimes they can be embedded into the closer body directly. During normal operation, these door holders will hold the fire doors open, and when the fire alarm system activates, these door holders will automatically release and let the doors close, which stops the spread of smoke and fire throughout a building. Their primary purpose is to prevent the fire doors from being propped open by unapproved sources and automatically close these fire barriers. Very similarly, fire shutters can also be installed over windows, and their purpose is to automatically seal off the window when the fire alarm system activates. Another form of automatic fire barrier is the fire damper. You can think of these as fire doors, but for the air ducts. When the fire alarm system activates, these dampers in the vents will close automatically and stop the spread of smoke throughout the building's ventilation system. 
All of the things I just talked about are very important parts of a fire alarm system, but how do you connect things like a fire barrier with a fire alarm system? Well, the answer to that is relays. Relays are control modules that either take the form of addressable modules, or they can just be as simple as triggerable relays, but in general, their purpose is to control elements of the fire alarm system. You can think of a relay as a set of contacts that's either opened or closed when the fire alarm system is activated, and they can be used for a multitude of different things. For example, they can be used to close fire barriers, or perhaps in a concert hall or something like that, they can be used for music shutdown if that's necessary. In some cases, relays can even be used to trigger a fire department response, which, speaking of that, we should talk about fire alarm system communicators, or dialers. Fire alarm communicators are really important parts of fire alarm systems. Their job is to dial out to the fire department or monitoring service to let them know that there's an emergency event at the building. Basically, they automatically call the fire department when the fire alarm is activated. While we're on the topic of communication, let's talk about fire emergency telephones. Fire emergency telephones are usually only found in high-rise buildings, but they're usually red boxes located near stairways, they're labeled sometimes as floor warden stations, sometimes they're just a phone jack, but in general they pretty much all do the same thing. They're basically just a communication telephone between that floor's fire alarm telephone and the fire alarm panel or fire command center downstairs. The battery cabinet is exactly what it sounds like. It's a box underneath the fire alarm panel that houses the backup batteries for the fire alarm system. In many cases, the batteries will just fit in the fire alarm panel, especially for smaller systems. But for larger applications, the batteries might be larger, so you might need a specialized cabinet to house those batteries. A fire alarm terminal cabinet is basically a very large and organized junction box. Inside of a terminal cabinet, you'll find terminals, shocker, but basically it's just a place where connections can be made. They make troubleshooting a lot easier for technicians. Documentation boxes are boxes mounted near the fire alarm panel that contain important information that the fire department might need to access. In some cases, they contain fire alarm documents. In other cases, they might contain building plans. What's in the box is usually determined by the local authority having jurisdiction, but in general, they just contain important documents. Now we're moving on to some more niche things that are not required everywhere. A master box is a fire alarm box installed inside or outside of a building, and it serves as the tie between that building's fire alarm system and the city's municipal fire alarm system. These boxes are basically very simple dialers, but they're largely obsolete now because many cities are removing their municipal fire alarm systems, and many newer technologies like wireless communication have replaced the fire alarm box. Still, a lot of cities still use these fire alarm boxes today. Fire alarm system printers are pretty uncommon these days, but occasionally you'll still see a fire alarm system with a printer. The fire alarm printer will basically print out a record of every single event that happens on the fire alarm system and keep a record. Water flow bells are bells mounted outside of a building, usually above the fire department connection, that indicate when there's a water flow condition in the building. That is, the fire sprinkler system has activated. Fire alarm beacons are not a requirement everywhere, but some jurisdictions might require that an external fire alarm strobe or beacon be installed above the entrance closest to the fire alarm panel. Sometimes the beacon is used to indicate other important locations, such as the location of the Knox box or fire department connection, but in general the beacon locates something important. Well that's going to do it for today, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something, I think I covered pretty much all of the main fire alarm system components, although I might have forgotten some of the smaller niche things, so if I did, let me know in the comment section below. If you want a more detailed video on any of the things I talked about today, definitely let me know that too in the comment section, but other than that, thank you for watching once again, and take care.